forgot the music. Oh, what a tragedy that would have been. But fortunately, right? Turn it up a bit. There we go. Now you know it's official. Now you know it's official. We can't start without the music, can we? All right. Good. Oh, look at that. We got a party going on in here. I see some of you boys coming in. Alright, let's give everybody about 10 more seconds to get in. And then we'll get started. Sorry, I already got started. Oh, I'm a cheater. It's true. Alright, cool. I see some of you guys getting in there. Coot, is that you in there? Is that you in there? Are you ready to cheers? You got your drink ready? I hope you do. Because it's almost, almost that time. So, welcome, everybody. Welcome to Live with Jack number 98. Can you believe it? 98. We're almost at 100. We're almost at 100. We're going to have to think of something special to do for number 100. When we've, we've officially made it that far. Can we fix this thing a little? Eh, it might be as good as it's going to get. Whatever. Welcome to Live with Jack number 98. And today I'm going to teach you how to make her your girlfriend, should you want to. And we might actually dissuade you because some of this stuff that we're going to go over might make you ask a couple of questions that you hadn't asked yourself before. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Oh, cool. I knew it would be you. I knew you're in there. Now, if you would like to truly enjoy today's lesson, if you'd like to take it to the absolute maximum, if you want to reach the height of humanity, the culmination of all of civilization, and take everything and coalesce together into one magnificent big bang of a lesson, all you have to do is grab your glass, your mug, or your flask, a chalice, a stein, or even a cask, raise it high, and let's make a splash. It's time now for our libation batch. Toast the night and enjoy the mood. Together now, we drink some booze. On your mark, let's not wait. It's Cheers with Chaps, so don't be late. Whoa, the sounder. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, magnificent. Julius, you just missed the Cheers with Chaps. You better have yourself a drink. All right, now let's jump into today's lesson. So today's topic, specifically requested by one of the newer members of our community, here we are, about how to make her your girlfriend. Now I'm going to teach this lesson under the assumption that you are talking to a girl and that you've at least been on a couple of dates, that this isn't some brand new girl, okay? Because if it's a brand new girl, you haven't even been on a date yet, you're not worried about this yet. You're not trying to make her your girlfriend yet. First, we need to actually go on a couple of dates. We need to break the ice. We need to get things moving, see if we even line up, if we match, stuff like that. So I'm not going to deal with that today. Today, what we're going to be dealing with is once you've been on a few dates together, things have been moving along, you're having fun, and then you're thinking about taking it to the next level to exclusivity, to being boyfriend and girlfriend. How do you do that? Should you even do that? It's a very good question. And that's actually where we're going to start. Because the first thing that you need to do before you even get into like, oh, well, how do I do this? Is, I think it was a Jurassic Park quote, and it's definitely something that Coop needs to think about. Just because you can doesn't mean you necessarily should. So let's think about it. The first thing you have to do is you have to understand your why. You come into me saying, Papa Jack, Papa Jack, how do I make her your girlfriend? My first question for you, absolutely every single time, is going to be, why do you want to make her your girlfriend? Coot, I, I know that you understand that. I'm not talking about the girlfriend thing. I'm talking about you out there programming Skynet. I got my eyes on you trying to take over humanity. Mad scientist. That's not even a... It's not even a Halloween costume. It's just who you are. So 
let's understand your why. Why do you want to make her your girlfriend? What does that mean? Well, what exactly are your goals? What is it that you're trying to achieve by making her your girlfriend? What are your relationship goals? Where are you trying to take this? Is this relationship something that you see potentially as longer term? Is it something that you see moving past being just boyfriend and girlfriend? If not, then why do you want to be boyfriend and girlfriend? I'm not saying that there's not a reason, right? I'm not saying that, oh, you should only make her your girlfriend if you're planning on marrying her. No, that would be stupid. No, what I'm saying is you need to figure out what your reason is because, and you need to be honest about it, because your reason might just be, well, I'm afraid that if I don't commit to her, then, or if I don't get her to commit to me, then she's going to date other guys and then I'll lose her and I'll feel lonely. Like, okay, cool. Do you want to come in, Bento? You want to come and join the party? Okay. Come on. No, you're scared of doors. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> right. So you need to figure out what your reason is. And you need to be honest about it because that's not necessarily a good reason or a bad reason. It just is a reason. If you're afraid of losing her, okay, cool. That's a good place to start. But then why are you afraid of losing her? Do you not have other options? Do you not have the ability to find someone else? What if you do lose her? Serious question. If you do become her boyfriend, does that stop any of this other stuff from happening? Does this actually secure anything? Maybe, maybe not. You might be placing a higher importance on this than you should. So it's a serious question. Understand your why. Understand what your goals are. The next thing you need to do is you need to, oh man, you need to identify the roles. Okay, Simba, you want to leave? All right, Simba, go. Go. Goodbye. You're gone. You're not allowed back in. You need to understand the correct roles of men and women in relationships. So in every, in every relationship, this is true all over the planet. This is true no matter where you are, no matter what your situation is, this is true. Women's job is to protect sex, is to essentially protect their chastity. They are the gatekeepers for sex. Men are the gatekeepers of commitment. Why? Because whenever you commit to a girl, she expects you to give you more of her or to give her more of your stuff. Not just physical things, not just money, but also time, energy, focus, things like that. So this is why men are the protectors of commitment because you're expected to give up a lot whenever you commit. What does a girl give up whenever she promises you commitment? She says, okay, cool. I'll be your girlfriend. What does she give up? Just regular sex, right? That's basically the only requirement for her to remain your girlfriend is regular sex and only with you, right? Those are kind of the only requirements for her. Okay, cool. What are you required to do to maintain that relationship as her boyfriend? It's a lot bigger list, right? Okay. So as a serious question, if you're dating a girl and if you guys are already hooking up, right? So she's already giving up her part of the, the equation here and she's not asking you for commitment. Why is that? Because that might be a red flag. And we're going to get into some of that stuff a little bit later. But I'm giving you all of the down dirty stuff before we get into the actual how to make her your girlfriend. Because I want you guys to actually think through it. Don't just jump into it and be like, oh, well, I don't know. We've been banging for like two weeks. So that means that I'm her boyfriend, right? Like, slow it down a little bit, right? So, so if she's not asking you for commitment, that actually begs the question of why not? Because you pursued sex, right? Because that's the thing that she safeguards, that she holds onto, that she retains access to, and she gets to choose who can access it. So she should be, similarly, pursuing commitment from you. And if she's not, that raises a question of why. Why not? Serious question, something to ask yourself. Now, if she is pursuing commitment for you, from you, then the how to make her your girlfriend is not nearly as important because you already know how. You just say yes. But the why becomes 10 times as important because you need to figure out specifically what your goals are and how she fits into all that stuff. We're going to get into some of that down here. The next thing, yin-yang. 
okay? Uh, you need to have balance. Now, I've talked a lot before about keeping a masculine and feminine balance in a relationship. And I don't just mean like they, oh, well, I'll go to work for 12 hours a day and you'll stay home and do the dishes. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, personality-wise and relationship, uh, communication-wise, things like that, where you are leading things, where you are not controlling, but kind of controlling, not commandeering, not commanding, but leading and controlling interactions so that it's fun for both of you, so that she doesn't feel the pressure, the stress of the masculine roles because you're taking them and you're taking charge of them. And she's able to provide the feminine roles. Now, if you're doing your part and she's doing her part, then great, you're gonna have a good balance between the two of you because that's what a good relationship looks like is it's in balance. She's bringing things to the table that you're not and you're bringing things to the table that she's not. Now, that also means you both have to be bringing something to the table. If, like a lot of young relationships, you're like, well, I don't know, I like her and she likes me, and so we're just gonna keep on hanging out together, so I guess we're boyfriend and girlfriend. Like, okay, that's fine, but it's not really boyfriend and girlfriend, is it? Because it's not anything real, it's not anything serious, it's not anything substantive. It's literally just, oh, well, but we wanna keep having sex, and I don't want her having sex with other people, so I'm gonna promise not to also, have sex with other people. The rest of it is not even a consideration. Okay, cool. So you're just monogamous sex partners, but there's not any actual yin yang. There's not any actual balance. There's not any actual relationship dynamic in there. You're just monogamous fuck buddies at that point, right? So it's a very serious question. All of this stuff is important to consider and important to understand before you even think about how to make her your girlfriend. You need to think about whether or not you should and what the relationship will look like with that. All right, so let's see here. Coot says, shouldn't the title be how she will make you her boyfriend then? Yes, Coot, for this part. Yes, right. But, but this topic was specifically requested by somebody who is already in a situation where they've been banging for a while and then he wants to turn it into something more. So I had to open it up by saying, all right, let's, let's ask a couple of questions here because that's not normally the question that I get asked. I don't often get guys coming to me saying, hey, I'm getting all the free milk. How can I buy the cow, right? So I have to open it up with that question. And then I'll actually answer the question that I was asked. So let's get into that. How do you make her your girlfriend? Well, you're going to have to lay down a pretty solid foundation first, right? Like I said, you, you can't just go up to somebody that you've never met before and say, hey, my name's Jack. You want to be my girlfriend? I mean, maybe you could. If you're good enough, if you've got the right R, if you've got the right looks, if you've got the right everything else, maybe it'll work. But for most people, probably not. Yeah, we just did that one. So you need to have some kind of foundation laid. Now, that usually happens on the first couple of times that you guys hang out. You hang out, you do some things together, you have some experiences together. So you're going to have at least some kind of shared experiences from the get-go. But also, it's good if you have some shared interests, some things that you both enjoy. Now, those might be cultural things, those might be hobbies, those might be uh, different things that you enjoy doing or talking about or anything like that. But you need to have something in common that you can actually use as a foundation to create some kind of relationship. Now, you might not know everything you have in common from the get-go. I understand that. But there should be some things that you enjoy doing together that you can use to create some foundation of, yes, I like hanging out with this person, and she likes hanging out with me. Now, what I would caution you against here is for the first few dates, at least, most people are, I don't necessarily want to say fake but they're definitely putting forward a side of themselves that isn't quite the complete package, right? It's very intentionally curated. It's, it's really the, the best of uh, reels, right? Like it's, it's not the whole thing. So be aware that the first couple of times that you see somebody is probably the best that they're ever going to act around you. This is just what it is. And you're doing the same thing with them. 
And that's okay, because that's kind of how the beginning of a relationship is. You're not sure yet about what you can open up about. She's not sure yet what she can open up about. So you're kind of trying to wade through each other's lies or hidden truths or things like that. At least have a foundation of something good, some shared interests, some shared experiences. The next thing you want to have is you want to have some clear communication between the two of you. This should be regular communication. If it's somebody who you just hit up every Tuesday night whenever you're off work and you're like, ah, fuck it. I feel like a couple of beers and a blowjob. Hey, what you doing? Hey, you up? Like, come on. That's not that's not a relationship. That's not boyfriend, girlfriend, right? So it's just a hookup. It's just a fuck buddy. That's all that that is. So you need to have clear communication between the two of you where you're actually talking regularly beyond just banging, right? You can get together and you can bang, but also you enjoy talking to them when you aren't trying to bang. If you don't have that, if you don't have clear and open and constant communication in the sense that you actually enjoy talking to one another when you're not trying to hide the sausage, then it's probably not boyfriend, girlfriend time, right? So you need to have at least some level of clear communication between the two of you. You also need to have kind of uncovered a bit of the real self in there as well so that you know a bit more about what you're getting into. And like we've talked about before, you need to know very clearly what you're bringing to the table as well. What is your offer? Because understanding not just your own relationship goals, but hers as well, where do you think she's going to imagine this goes? If you're hooking up with a girl and then you say, hey, you know what? I really like this. I really like hanging out with you. I want to be exclusive. I want to be serious with you. Okay, cool. What's she hearing? What's she hearing? How is she going to perceive that? She's going to perceive that as one of two ways. It really depends on how you're going to come across to her, right? She might perceive that as, oh, he's got no other options. He's got no hoes. So he wants to limit me. All right. If she hears it that way, you're probably dealing with a girl who's meant for the streets. Free to toss her. No harm, no foul, no big loss there. But if she's actually a good girl, if she's actually girlfriend material, then she's going to hear it as, okay, cool. So he's offering up the commitment to me without me even pushing for it. So he must be viewing this as a very serious relationship. I wonder if I should go ahead and like pencil in a time for him to meet my parents. So she's going to start thinking that far ahead. If she's the type of girl who you want to be a girlfriend or boyfriend, girlfriend with anyway. So be aware of what it is when you offer up the thing that you safeguard first. Again, clear communication. You want to know where her head's at and you want her to know where you are. Because unless you're thinking that same way, then you want to make it very clear what it is that you are thinking, why you're proposing this and what you expect out of it. And we're going to get to that part a little bit later as well. The next thing that you want is you want balanced independence. Here's what you definitely do not want is you don't want to be that guy who gets a girlfriend and then all of a sudden now they never do anything apart from one another and they're together 24 seven and they walk around wearing gay ass couples t-shirts and shit like that. You do not want to do that. You do not want to be that guy. I promise you, promise, 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 promise you. You do not want to be that guy. You do not want to act that way. If you do that, if you decide to go all in on a relationship that quickly, that early, then one of two things is going to happen here. Either one, you're going to be her bitch forever, period. Or two, it's going to be one of those relationships that burns fast, burns bright, burns hard, but burns out very quickly. You're talking two to three weeks. In that case, why even bother with any of this shit? Just bang for another two or three weeks, say sayonara, and then move on, right? So understand what the what the second and third order consequences are for the different things that you do. You want to maintain a level of independence for both of you whenever you enter into a relationship. You want to make it clear that, for example, uh, for me, I play pool on Wednesday nights. That's fine. That's always been a thing. And at least for now, it still is a thing, right? Whenever I first started dating Lady North five years ago, I play pool on Wednesday nights. Okay, cool. No problem. She never even asked, like, oh, well, then can I come? Can I join? No. No, of course not. She wouldn't even ask. Why? Because 
It's important that you both have your own independence, that you have free time apart from one another. Something, something, distance makes the heart grow fonder. Okay, distance makes the fart grow stronger, something like that. Can't remember exactly, but I'm sure it's buried in there somewhere. But importantly, you need to have your own independent time apart from one another and make plans together, do things together. Now, for a lot of people, especially if you're a little bit older, if you're working, you have a job, she has a job, cool. This actually becomes a lot easier because you can just plan stuff together on the weekends. And it doesn't even have to be every weekend. Every other weekend, or maybe two to three weekends a month, something like that. That's a good amount of time to spend together, right? Don't worry about it being every single weekend. It doesn't have to be on a set schedule. It doesn't have to be anything like that. Keep it a little bit loose. Keep it a little bit flexible. But do not go full-on codependent and like symbiote kind of style that early on. Hold on a second. We got a comment here. Let's see what we got. Big Coot says, from the streets did she emerge and to the streets she will return. And I say unto you, she is for the streets. So be not weary when she must return whence she came. Now, just so you know, whence literally means from where. So no from on that. But that's the grammar Nazi in me. Hey! All right, cool. Uh, I'm not going to read that last part. Sorry, I'm, I'm not trying to get banned on YouTube. Hi. There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, next. You already laid the foundation. You have a relationship. You're building it. It's going. Excellent. Everybody's happy. Awesome. Cool. Let's have a quick drink. Ding! Papa Jack's having a day. And so you're getting a very interesting version of me tonight. Welcome to the party. All right. Next, you're going to start actually building the relationship. You have a foundation. Everything is there. It's set. You guys are banging. You're having a good time. Everybody's happy. Cool. Let's build towards a little bit more. So this is where you're going to kind of start testing the waters. You're going to see where's her head at, right? Remember, we have clear communication. How do we have that clear communication? Because we're starting to ask some questions like this. We're starting to ask about future plans. We're starting to ask about things like that. What What do you What do you plan to do? Um, okay, cool. So the guy who asked this, he's in Korea right now. He's in Korea. I know he's here on a one-year work contract. Cool. Start up a conversation about what you're planning to do at the end of your contract, right? Because by my math, that's going to be in like eight, nine months, something like that. Okay, so start up a conversation about that. The book of Ghetto Philosopher as advertised, it's not there for grammar. Yeah, I I, I know, I know. Um, so start talking about what you're planning on doing after your contract. Or in your case, Coot, start talking about what you plan on doing after you finish your doctorate, right? After you finish this stuff, cool. What are you planning on doing next? Where do you plan on taking things? Not just about the relationship, but what do you plan on doing? Do you have any plans to travel? Do you have plans to go back and visit family? Maybe ask her as well. So, you know, do you do you have any do you have any travel plans in the future or is there some place that you've been trying to go or anything like that? And try to start uh, sharing some of that about your future plans because if your future plans are completely separate, like uh, we had one guy in the community a couple of months ago who matched with a girl on Bumble and she said like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm moving to England in like three weeks to go do a, a working holiday visa. And it's like, okay, cool. So we know that that's not it, right? That's not it. It's just, okay, cool. So we can bang for three weeks or we cannot bang for three weeks, but those are pretty much our only two options, right? So talk about your future plans because that might make a difference as to whether or not you even want to be pursuing this. The next thing that you need to do, oh, this is a big one. This is a big one. Hold on a minute. Where's my, where's my greenie? My mean greenie. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to superstar this guy. Superstar it. Superstar it. Because no matter who she is, no matter who she is, you've got to check with the homies. you got to check with your friends. Listen, if you're, if you're too embarrassed to introduce her to your friends before you all start dating, Woo, that's a big red flag. That's a big, 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 big red flag. And if you do introduce her to your friends, make sure that it's friends you actually trust to tell you the truth. And then after y'all hang out all together, 
Then afterwards, ask them, be like, hey, so what do you think, right? Hit me, hit me real, right? If you saw green flags, if you saw red flags, you don't need to spare my feelings. I need to hear it because this is where your friends come in. Your good friends. This is where they come in because your good friends, they have a responsibility to you in this situation. And I want to make this very clear because in case you're one of the friends, whoever gets asked, let me clarify right now exactly what your responsibility is according to international bro code. Okay. This is set in stone. This is the rule. If you have an objection to a girl that a guy wants to date, you are obligated to make that objection known once and once ever. That's it. You let him know up front. You say, hey, by the way, man, look, I'm not trying to say anything, but she was trying to hit me up on Bumble two months ago, too, or something like that. So just a heads up, just to let you know. Okay, cool. Now your objection has been heard. It has been noted. And then you never bring it up ever again. There's never any like, hey, I fucking told you so. Oh, you should have listened to me. None of that. We're not here to rub it in. Anything like that. We're not here to bring it up again and again and again and say, dude, 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 you really need to stop. You really need to stop. No, nope, none of that shit. Your job as the friend is to tell your buddy one time, and one time only. Make it clear and then let it go. And that's it. Now, as the guy who's asking, as the guy who's thinking about dating this girl, you have to take those things. You have to hear them. You have to take them into account. And you should listen to them. Because if they're actually your good friends, and if they have your best interests in mind, they're probably not trying to screw you over here. And they want to see what's best for you. So take it under very serious advisement before you move any further along down this path. Definitely, absolutely, no matter what, check with the homies, always. Then, on your own, you have to consider the red flags and green flags. You have to consider, look, what's this girl bringing to the table? What's going on here, right? What are we, what are we, what are we dealing with here? Is this a, is this a, a hookup for two, three weeks and then we're done? Or does she seem like the kind of girl who's going to like, get crazy about fucking nothing one day where I'm going to walk home and she's like beating the shit out of my dog with a sandal. And then whenever I tell her to stop hitting the dog, she's going to turn and start hitting me. That's a true story. That happened to me. That should have been a big red flag, right? Turns out 21 year old Jack was a fucking idiot. I know big surprise, right? But you need to consider the red flags and green flags, honestly, and don't let your dick do the thinking. Here's how you do it. Get yourself a little PNC. You guys know PNC? That's post not clarity. I don't care if you need to bang her and then go like turn on the shower and then just sit there and let the water run over you. But now you've got like about 15 to 30 minutes of pure PNC where you can think clearly without all the evil gunking up your brain. And then you just sit there and you start thinking through stuff. Or you can just take care of it yourself. You guys know how to do that. And you think through this in the clearest way possible, in the clearest mindset possible. If you need to call the homies back in to ask them for help, you can. But at the end of the day, this is your decision. So you need to think about it. Think about the red flags you've seen. Think about the green flags you've seen. And actually weigh them against each other because you have to be your own accountant. You have to look at the list, at the pros and the cons, at the, okay, cool. What does she bring to the table? What is it going to cost me? Do I think this is worth it or not? Why? Why do I think this is worth it? Because, again, if I only think it's worth it because I'm afraid of being lonely, I'm afraid of being alone, that's a shit deal. That's a shit, shit, shit deal. Don't do that. You need to actually have something that makes it worthwhile to you. What does she add to your life? Because a good woman does add to your life. She brings genuine value and adds things to your life. She makes your life better. In a lot of ways. So you have to actually think through those things. What does she bring? What's it going to cost me to keep that around? Okay. On balance, how do I feel that this is? Am I getting a good deal out of this? Or am I getting fucked? And not in a good way. Think about it. Because you have to be your own accountant. Now, once you've done all this shit... Once you've ignored all of my advice 
and ignored all of my warnings and you said yes but i still want to try and make this girl my girlfriend even though she's not asking for commitment even though she's throwing up every red flag she's like a chinese patriot throwing red flags left and right but even still you still want to make her your girlfriend okay fine here's what you do you need to actually have the talk with her you need to have a talk where you clearly state that you want the two of you to be exclusive and this needs to be clear it needs to be agreed on by both people of what exactly this looks like if you want special exceptions carved out for yourself this is the time during this talk you say it you're like okay but i need to be able to do these things or i need to have these things or i want to you know like let's let's make sure that we're both in agreement here because you're kind of making a contract between the two of you now not like a work contract or a financial contract but it is a social contract between the two of you and it's a contract that you can break and it has consequences for breaking it right so be aware that you are making a contract and that's what it is so if you aren't serious about it if you aren't fastidious about how you make the contract and i know it doesn't sound romantic and it's not it's not because at the end of the day a contract isn't romantic and that's what you guys are making together is you're making a contract a promise between the two of you and so you need to dictate what you expect that promise to look like on both your ends that's why we want to set clear boundaries and expectations okay cool i want us to be exclusive i want us to be boyfriend and girlfriend look uh here's here's kind of what i'm thinking about this right like i want to make this clear right like neither of us is going to be seeing other people right so if y'all met on a dating app and if you want her to delete the app make that clear be like all right now i don't know about you but i've already deleted the app that we met on so i think i expect you to do the same thing too right we're cool on that have that talk be clear about it uh what what if she brings the talk because girls usually do it before your decision is made right okay cool uh julius could you please hold on to that one and we'll get to that question uh in in just a couple of minutes i got you there Kuta. okay cool so you want to set clear boundaries and expectations right so like i said if you expect her to delete the app or something like that or if you say like by the way look you know that guy from your work who keeps on trying to hang out with you you need to not hang out with him he's absolutely trying to fucking beta male his way into your pants that's like those weird dudes with no muscle who show up to like the feminist fun run and stuff and they're like oh maybe if i maybe if i run 5k with her then she'll touch my willy or like some stupid shit like that like i, I need you to just kind of drop him right if, if there's something like that that you want to talk about that you want to bring up you need to make that clear now because if you bring it up later it's going to cost you because anything additional that you add to the contract later is going to cost you it's going to be more difficult it's going to sound weird it's going to sound uh maybe needy it might sound a little bit desperate it might sound a little bit uh clingy and um what's the word what's the word julius that that shit that that korean guys always do right where they're uh like over jealous all the time about fucking everything you know what i mean uh so you don't want to you don't want to come off that way you got fuck <laughs> that too that too but if it's your girlfriend right like you're trying to cock block her <laughs> existing yeah basically all right cool uh so make all of your all of your expectations all of your boundaries up front make them clear make them known you don't want to be trying to have this conversation later and be like oh well i thought that it was cool if like I just get a get a little blowy here and there, right? It's just a fucking blowy, right? Make it clear if that's a thing that you're like, okay, look, I won't have sex with anyone else, okay? But I need special special dispensation to get blowjobs or whatever it is, right? Like, make that clear up front. Now she might not agree to it. She might not agree to it. So you need to know whenever, just like just like with any contract, right? Know what your demands are, and then know what your wish list is right? If you're walking into a job interview, know that like, okay, cool. I 
I'm willing to take work up to this number of hours, but my wish would be like about 25% less, or I'm willing to take pay this low, but I wish for pay this high. So I'm going to try and aim for this, but I'll let them talk me down to here at the lowest. Okay. Understand what that is for you. Because again, I know it's not romantic, but it's realistic. And if you want to have a relationship that isn't built on fucking covert contracts and people say, oh, well, oh, nobody would ever think to do that. And like, oh, I didn't expect you to think that or whatever else. You don't want that kind of bullshit relationship because it's so painful and it drives you through so much bullshit. And it's going to cost so much mental and emotional energy. Make all of your boundaries and expectations known up front. Maybe shoot for your wish list, but and eh, might not get them all. Next, don't be cringe. Don't be the guy who's going around being like, oh my God, did you hear? I got a girlfriend. Oh, did you see my new Facebook status update? Yeah. Have a look, have a look here, here. Wait, I'll show you on my phone. It's okay, here. Look, oh, yeah, I have a girlfriend, right? Like, don't, don't fucking be that guy. If you're excited about it, you're happy about it, I get that. Look, tell your buddies. Tell your buddies, seriously. You're like, hey, I'm really fucking pumped. Uh, Joanna and I decided to make it exclusive. Like, okay, cool. Awesome. Just throw it out there. Again, like we said earlier, we're like, one time. That's enough. It's good. That's it. Cool. And then you're done. Don't be weird about it. Don't be cringe about it. You don't even fucking need to put it on social media. Honestly, unless there's some specific reason why you have to put it on there, other than just like, Stroking your own ego, you're a superstar. You're a superstar. And you guys aren't even fucking old enough to get that reference. Maybe Julius gets that one. But don't be cringe about it. Don't be weird. Don't do the couple's clothes, right? Don't do the couple's clothes. Don't do shit like that. Don't do the like, I'm with stupid. Stupid, right? Don't, don't fucking, don't be that guy, right? Don't be that guy. Don't be the weirdo. Just, you have a girlfriend, man, right? Like, Good. I'm glad, but don't be weird about it. Now, last thing you need to do. This is two parts, and this is actually probably the most important advice out of all of this stuff, except maybe the understanding yourself, because that goes for everything else. But in a relationship, two things, very crucial. You need to stay honest, both with yourself and with her, right? If shit's not working out, don't just like ghost out and be like, I don't want to talk to her anymore. Ah. And then just disappear. You just tell her, right? And then don't say like, oh, well, like, I don't really like hanging out with her anymore. So I'm just going to like start fucking other people until she finds out about it. Like, don't, don't do that. Stay honest. Just be upfront about it. Be real, both with her and stay honest with yourself. If you find yourself getting into a bad place, if you find yourself saying, I don't really like this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. That's a talk you need to have with yourself first and then with her second. But second part of this, equally important. Stay sharp. Keep your knives sharp. This doesn't mean that you have to keep talking to other girls, that you have to keep plates spinning or anything like that. But it does mean you need to keep your skills sharp. Because talking to people is the best skill that you can have in your life. It's better than anything else. If you can maintain your style, your charisma, your flirtatious personality, if you can maintain the thing that got her in the first place, then you'll never worry about being alone again. You'll never worry that you don't have another option. You'll never worry about, but what if she leaves me? Because you keep your skills sharp. Now, doesn't mean that it won't hurt. Right? Because relationships end, shit hurts, breaking up is hard to do. I get all that. Yeah, of course. But you'll never be worried about whether or not you can find somebody else, whether or not there are other good options out there. You might think it sometimes, deep there in the back of your mind. And it might nag at you a little bit sometimes, but I don't know if I'll ever find a girl as good as her. But the front of your brain, that that wonderful prefrontal cortex of ours that is able to process all of the information knows for a fact through proof that, yeah, you can because you did before. And we are a pattern recognition machine. So if you were able to do it before, you'll be able to do it again. 
keep your skills sharp, stay sharp, stay frosty, and be ready. Because, look, if she got with you because of your skills, and then you throw away your skills to stay with her, is she still going to like you? Probably not. So, be aware of all that. And with all of that said, I have done a superb job tonight of not just telling you how to make her your girlfriend, but of, of trying to convince you to, to fucking not. Because unless you have a really good reason, or like Coop said, uh, if she's pressuring you, then this conversation probably shouldn't happen. So, with all that said, it is time for everybody's favorite part of Live with Jack, which is the part where you hit the like button and the subscribe button and the bell. Hey, it's everybody's favorite part. No, seriously, if you haven't done it yet, I really do appreciate it. Every single week, you guys make it this far in. Uh, please hit the like button. And if you know anybody who needs to hear this message, maybe you've got a friend out there who's thinking like, oh, well, this girl, man, I really want to try and make her my girlfriend. And you're like, what fucking why? He's like, oh, I don't know. It just, it just feels like the next thing to do. Cool. Send him this video. He needs to see this. Okay. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys joining in. And now we're going to join with our other friends because today we have another special guest joining in. And we're going to do today's live Q&A section with Big Julius, who you all know. But hey, hey. our good friend Antonio coming in hey, hello. straight from Italy. Yep. Nice. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you all. Are, are you the, I know I sent you the link before, right? Are you in the Discord chat? Oh, discussion? No, no, not, not at the moment, no. Uh, not at the moment? All right, we need to get that sorted out. Oh. Sure. Anyway, how are you boys doing? Doing all right. I'm completely Good. fine, man. Yeah. Awesome. Got back from being out, laid down for a bit, and then I was like, okay, I got I to gotta become a part of this right now. Hell yeah. <laughs> Same thing for me. Yeah. What time is it over there in Italy, Antonio? Uh, actually, 2 p.m. No, 2.30, yeah. 2.30. Still pretty early. Yeah, it's uh, nighttime, if you can tell over here. Yeah, just had a gym session and just went back here straight. First thing yeah. that I, when I came home. Nice, <laughs> nice. What did you work out today? Uh, I got chest. I do chest. Ooh. I do biceps, too. Biceps, biceps and chest, mainly. On right. Mondays, yeah. today is uh, Thursday, because I skipped my training. I mean, that's my fault. My fault. Mm -hmm. And I just no, went I, in. Nice. How I skipped you? today. I was gonna do um I was gonna do chest and back, but I skipped today, so I'll do that tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. It gets a bit uh tiring sometimes. You just you just, just wanna skip things. Plus Jack oh. just invited me here and Oh yeah. <laughs> I just want to skip, you know. You used to work out <laughs> a long, long time ago in a city far, far away. I I remember having time for things, dude. I've been up <laughs> since I've been up since nine, and I've been on calls and working like literally straight through. So for the last uh, fourteen hours, about like just straight through. Mm -hmm. And then after this, Antonio and I are doing more filming, and so it's like mm -hmm. time. Who the fuck has time? <laughs> no, I, I. It is an option. Yeah, it's. I understand. It is. It is about priorities, and yeah, I really wanted to exercise today. I did. I did a lot of exercise. You know, this entire month and everything. But um, yeah, just. Oh, congrats on the yeah. sex. <laughs> <laughs> that was Sunday, damn it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's let's jump into the questions. So we've got that one from Coot that yeah, he asked towards the end there. So what if she brings up the talk? first because girls usually do that before your decision is made that's a great question Coot. um julius when this happens what do you normally do how do you deal with this um uh, depends on what i want of course so the girl just like uh if i'm if i'm not into it but i do just like you know the company or the sex i'll just bullshit my way through it. i'll just be like 
oh yeah you know like yeah like yeah well, i just want to say we're dating you know that's really cool <laughs> but like if um i really like her or something yeah. um then usually i initiate before she does mm. uh, so that's like first not first date but first time we we do it right so i think that's more uh intimate uh more grounds to see like where you stand on this and that's where i i initiate and i'll go like hey so like where do you see this going uh you know i really like you and i don't just do it with anybody kind of thing i mean of course i do it with a lot of people but um with i want to say with just this one um and i think well, just i don't do it with anybody else like, in this dimension what's that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like I, I i just bring it up first and i'm just like really direct straightforward in person uh, and then I just get my answer, whether I'm disappointed or not. I think in person is absolutely crucial on that. Yeah. yeah. Trying to do shit like this over text is it's it's a fool's errand, right? Yeah, like, that's that's my that's also my experience, honestly. Yeah. I've never true. tried to do stuff on text anymore, man. Any important stuff, at least, because it it kind of kills the emotions behind the relationship, you know like yeah. one month earlier everything seems all right every both of us are excited and stuff then we do the stuff through text and stuff and we we see each other in person and it, it's not the same thing like it, it becomes kind of fake sort of if you feel what i'm, what I'm talking about mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of like for example the last time that i talked with my ex girl like a couple of years ago when we first met and stuff we joined the relationship in we started texting and stuff we were excited because just on a saturday we decided to you know link up and if you get what i'm saying then, i like that <laughs> yeah after, after, after a you couple of weeks you make a pasta yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i see i mean we do use all of the hand gestures here in italy what i'm using here is just the one percent of your <laughs> you can't really see. Perfect. Right. Yeah, great. and just like after two or three weeks or so, we started texting, texting. We couldn't see each other because either I was busy or she was doing something else that day and she couldn't come in my house or I couldn't come to hers and stuff. And after we just like three to four weeks, we see each other. We see each other and we see like, oh, okay. Like the situation gets weird. Yeah. because it's as if you know the person but then some time passes out and you just you know you you see something different okay it's kind of hard to explain but it's not the same thing as you first met each other in person mm -hmm. that's all i think that's from my experience a couple of years ago at least no that, that that's, what, what, that's what, happened to me a few times yeah we're like um you just kind of lose that spark because you've been apart so long and you just message each other so are you used to kind of sending and receiving messages but like that's no that's totally different from when you meet in person where you're constantly around each other and it's yeah definitely where you have to wait and you just play around and think about it um so yeah i i totally get that because i've had that before where it was just kind of like this is really different um and you know kind of awkward also but yeah um going back to the original topic though I, I do think that um in my case i think the sooner the better and in person is by far the most important thing to do um actually uh, to to support my 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 theories um i had a friend today who who went to go uh meet a girl in person that he he's been dating for two weeks and i was like i think the best thing for you to do is just to meet her in person don't do any of this over text or anything just see what happens and Unfortunately, it went horribly for him. So, yeah. Look, <laughs> sorry <laughs> for the dead guys. <laughs> texting is texting is is uh, first of all, it's it's impersonal, uh, yeah. but second, and I think more importantly, um, it it's impossible to accurately communicate emotion and thoughts and feelings through text because words are such a small part of our communication yep. things like subtext things like your body language your facial expressions all of that stuff makes a massive difference and so trying to communicate purely through text is a terrible idea especially for important things like 
having a talk about what kind of relationship you're going to have. Yeah. Um, now, to answer Coot's question directly, if a girl brings it up to me, when when that's happened in the past, usually I ask them a lot of these same questions as I was like, huh, why? <laughs> like, because seriously, why, why, why do you want to know? Or like, why do you want to be exclusive? I'm not saying no, I'm just asking like, why? What is it that you're looking for? Talk to me a little bit more. Let's have this conversation. Let's dig into this, right? And a lot of them, I mean, actually all of them, right? They don't know the answer to any of this because girls don't learn game because they don't have to. See, they, they also don't learn introspection because they don't have to, right? So they don't know the answers to these questions. And it's like, okay, cool. Why, why do you want to be my girlfriend? Do you think that we might get married one day? Okay. Well, I mean, you're saying like, you don't know, you haven't thought about it. Okay, cool. Then what's, what is it that you're looking for? What is it that you want? Do you just want me to be exclusive with you? Because that's not necessarily being boyfriend and girlfriend, right? So what is it that we're talking about here? Okay, cool. What are your expectations? Do you expect me to like, if I go get a massage, am I not allowed to get a rub and tug, right? Like what, why or why not? Like what's, what's the situation here? Let's actually talk about it. And I'm such an analytical fucker. It's put a lot of them off and they're like, you know what? Just forget it. What do you want to do instead? I'm like, I have a bottle of whiskey and a bed that are calling our names. So let's go do that. I'll throw on an old episode of Dr. Who or some shit. <laughs> like, whatever, let's do that. Honestly, uh, the times that I have genuinely been interested in being with a girl seriously, I have initiated it. But mm -hmm. it's been, you know, advise it like through having thought through these things or through other rationale or other reasoning of like okay cool she's showing me the behavior that i like seeing i want to keep that behavior around let's do that right let's try and lock it in at this point right um which is it's it's fine if you know what you're doing and why you're doing it um i mean with with lady north the first time that she woke up at my place, I just rolled over and I was like, hey, you're my girlfriend now. She was like, wait, what? Like, I thought that, you know, uh, like American culture, you guys like dated a long time to get to know each other. And then eventually you had to talk about being exclusive or something like that. And I was like, eh, but I'm not worried about this. Right. Like, I want to I keep you the way you are. Right. It's fine. We're good. I don't need to see anymore. You're solid. Cool. Just went ahead and locked it in right then. But I wouldn't advise that most of the time because also that's the only time I've ever done that. <laughs> like it wasn't like every time that somebody woke up at my place, I was like, oh, you're my girlfriend now. So you need to actually be aware of all the stuff that I went through tonight. And once you have that little checklist running in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, yeah, check, 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 check. Okay, cool. Done. Yep. Sealed. Um, yeah, something something that I like a lot about what you've discussed tonight is also the part about red flags. Yeah. Now, yeah, what I see about a lot of guys personally, what, one of my mistakes in the past is not being able to recognize the ability to detect red flags. Okay, not just in person, but also through text. Text, like because all you can see in that moment, because your your stomach is, has butterflies. I don't know, I don't know how you say them. American and stuff, yeah, but your 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 emotions are basically hiding the like the the thing in front of you that risks you know to hurt you in the future. That's why you, you know? got to get that post nut clarity because yeah. listen, your your dick is doing a lot of the thinking whenever yeah. you're with a girl you're attracted to, right? So okay, cool. Get the evil out and then be like, okay, cool. Now. Let's actually think through this, all right? Like, in the pro column, she touches my dick. I like that. Cool. 
in the negative column. Oh my God, that's a big fucking negative column. How did I not see any of that? Right. And like, it's because she's busy. Oh, sure. Her dick, right. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, there, I think being able to detect red flags is a major thing. Like, for example, with uh, my friend today, uh, the uh, the first major red flag I detected is when I first met her, and she's really good friends with this girl I used to see. Like, I I met her. It's it's like uh, Julius Caesar. I came, I saw, I conquered <laughs> all at once, right? <laughs> and the thing is, like, it was so quick. It was it was. Um, and, and then after me, it was another guy the following weekend and another guy the following weekend. It was just nonstop. Was, she's like a big time party girl. And this girl is going to go see her in a, uh, and stay with her for a month. And so I was like, Ooh, that's a bad sign. Uh, and so I tried to tell my friend this in like a, a nice way, but I guess he just wasn't seeing it. And unfortunately, you know, what happened, you know, he got the, the bad news, the bad shit that, uh, turned out today. So you, it's super important to to know uh, uh, to find to look at these 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 um, what do you call it flaws in the girls red flags. Yeah. Wait, you mean the one that we were talking about earlier? The one, yeah. He he went boyfriend and girlfriend with her, and then she went off to Thailand and started banging some other dude. No, no, no. Right before she's leaving, they went to go have the talk today. I told him like get this sorted before she goes. I and I knew right away. I was like, it's not. I don't think it's gonna work. Uh -huh. Too many red flags. And um, yeah, uh, my my gut feeling was right. Um, she's just been dating around. She's friends with this girl. She acts just like her friend. Oh, so she's a super hoe too. Yep. Do they know JY? No, no, no. She's they're like in their early twenties. JY is like in her late thirties. I don't care. Listen, super hoes know each other, right? Yeah. Like you see yeah. each other around, you fucking know. Real recognizes real game recognizes game. These super hoes who are all foreigner lovers, they gotta know each other, right? Now they might not talk, but they they know each other, right? By the way, Antonio, you don't know this yet because you're not in the Discord chat, but we've what? got we've got this one girl who I think everybody in the discord chat who's on bumble has all matched with her every single person has all matched with her and so we're we've decided to start calling her our community mascot she's <laughs> she's our new mascot Ooh, jy welcome <laughs> to the party she doesn't know it yet <laughs> like, does, she, does she have a personal record on body count or something now <laughs> that's what we're wondering <laughs> the, the, the assumption is yes. Yeah. Like, All right. yeah the lines. <laughs> if, if she <laughs> matched with everyone in our community, then one of two things is happening. Either one, she's banging everybody in Seoul, or two, she has <laughs> joined our Discord community and specifically sought out every single person in our community. That seems very unlikely. So I'm going with number one as the more likely outcome here. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I definitely want to see that. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. Uh, I'll, I'll, when, when we finish here, I'll send you the link to the. Yeah. Um, let's. Call Another, it, yeah, uh, if you want to talk about something that I also enjoyed a lot about your lesson, is also about the ability of understanding woman emotions. Okay, because that there's something that drives me nuts about women in general, is that one day you're talking to her she seems so into you okay she seems grabbed to you like she's hooked literally the next day like you go talk to her okay maybe she she didn't say good morning and stuff whatever she maybe she she was leaving or so, some stuff you go try and talk to her even in person and you see like her all distracted on the phone or maybe just not caring and stuff and then when she sees you she just gives you like these short answers and stuff like hey how was your day fine you see what i mean what the day earlier instead she was like she will she will tell you like everything she will make literally a list of things you will start talking to her at 2 p.m you will end up like at midnight you see like and this is just a matter of one day this is something also that i don't understand about 
women and stuff and how like how they manifest their emotions okay well so, like you guess maybe you did something wrong the, the day earlier but you see that next day it wasn't the case okay let me let me explain it to you uh this way um for have you ever gotten really into a, a TV show or a, a YouTube channel or something for like yeah, yeah. a day or two? And then you're like, you're like, oh, I'm going to watch all of this stuff. And then like you, you, you like everything and you subscribe to it and all that stuff. And then like a week later you get a notification. And it's like, oh, this guy posted something. And you're like, oh, oh yeah, that thing. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't care. And then you swipe it away. All right. For most women and for most men this is how women treat guys is because they, they they treat them like entertainment so if she's busy like she's dumping all of her problems on you and she's talking to you about all this stuff till midnight it's because you're entertaining her okay you're you're mm -hmm. listening to her you're giving her something back in return as mm -hmm. she's getting a little bit of a return on her time on her investment or all this stuff okay cool she's viewing you as entertainment she's viewing you like a tv show or like uh a YouTube channel or like or whatever else. But then whenever she sees something else that catches her interest, then she moves on to that thing and she's forgotten about the old thing. Okay. This is how most women treat most men. And there's a reason for it. And it's because male attention is fucking cheap, right? Mm -hmm. Male attention is cheap for women, right? Male attention is, is nothing. Now for men, Female attention is very expensive. It's difficult to get, right? But for women, male attention is nothing. So if all you're offering her is attention, then she's entertained, but she's only entertained for the moment. She's not invested. There's a big difference there. Now, that creates the question of, okay, cool. How do I create investment? How do I get her emotionally invested in me, in my conversation, in what it is that we're doing and what we're talking about? Here's the easiest and quickest answer to that. If you want to create investment, stop agreeing with her. Start pushing back. Start asking her questions. Be like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You just said this thing, but it doesn't seem like that's the case, right? Like, why Why do you think that? What, what is this? No, 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 no. I disagree with you entirely. No, come on. Like, like, tell me about it, right? Let's talk about it a little bit. Okay, cool. Now she's having to engage a different part of her brain. Because now she's not just spewing nonsense. Now she's having to engage the thinking part of her brain. So you're demanding emotional investment from her by asking questions, by kind of pushing back a little bit, by creating a little bit of contention between the two of you. And then afterwards, if she's still having fun, because you still need to keep it light. You still need to keep it fun. It still needs to be entertaining. You still need to keep her on her toes, be pushing back a little bit, create this push-pull dynamic. Then... Afterwards, she's feeling invested, but she's also feeling entertained and she's feeling like she's having fun. And now she wants to keep it going because she's like, wait, but this this was fun and I'm into it. I want to see more. And so that's mm -hmm. the difference between Friends or Big Bang Theory, which is pure entertainment, or like Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones, where you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I want to see what the fuck happens next right? You create investment, emotional investment, and they'll keep coming back because they want more. They always want more. This is why soap operas work so well because they create this emotional investment every single episode, right? Every episode, they have some kind of twist and then they have a cliffhanger. And now you're invested. You want to come back to see what happens next. But whenever it's an episode of Friends or Big Bang Theory or even good ones, right? Like even something like 30 Rock or Arrested Development or whatever. Like, there's no real driving factor to keep you coming back, except that just the entertainment factor is, is exceptional. If you want her to keep coming back and to stay focused, you need to create investment. And that also means that you need to be able to offer something more other than just, I can give you my attention, right? Because the way that I that I like to explain it is my life is a fucking roller coaster, right? I'm having a great time, genuinely. I'm having an awesome life. 
I'm having a ton of fun doing what I'm doing. And I'm going to be riding on this roller coaster no matter what. Now, you seem like a cool girl. If you play your cards right, I'll give you a ticket to ride with me. But you, like, if you want, you can just sit off to the sidelines and watch. I don't care. I'm going to be having a great time. If you want on, you need to earn it because I have a serious offer of my life is fucking amazing. I'm going to have a great time. If you want to be part of it, you're going to have to earn your way in. Okay, cool. So let's talk about that a little bit. Now, you can't say these words. You have to show this. You, she has to feel this. But whenever she sees that and she can feel that in you and she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, I want to be part of this. I, I see where this is going and I fucking like it. I want to see what happens next. I want to see the next episode, the next season. Cool. She's invested. That's how you create that emotional investment. You So you shift the roles, basically. It's, you, it's not just... Completely yeah. change the roles, right? Like, mm. because I know for a fact that 99.9% .9 of women I meet are going to have way more boring lives than me. I know this. No, no. And so my offer to them is more than just entertainment. It's like, oh, no, no, no. Like, I'm actually doing shit. I'm having a time. I'm having experiences. I'm getting shit done. And I'm going to be flying high. Now, you don't have to join in, right? Not everybody is made for a life like this. Some people want to just sit back and just kind of watch the wheels go round and round, right? That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But for those who want on, there's only one ticket. If you're cool enough, you might be the one who gets it. That's it, right? It, it creates investment in them because I know what they have to offer and I know it's not much. So I don't really want it. Yeah. Isn't that the, the isn't the hard thing about that? Like, Keep, keep doing it in a consistent amount of time. Like, you get the memo. I see what you mean there, doing yeah. this thing of trying to make her invest in you. But aren't you supposed to find, like, always something new to try and make her invest as much as possible in you? Like, for example, you want her to invest. You, like, you ask questions. Okay, you shift the roles. And let's say that you spend a... a specific amount of time with this girl okay she got to know you a little bit more better she got to know what you do how you do it your past your experiences your hobbies she knows you better yeah. after a long time let's say that she, i want to be investing in this girl and consistent with this girl like is is the whole game always the same at that point or is there something that i have to do to keep the relationship alive you see what i mean there because it's not, she, it's not like about she got to know you better at that point. It's not about creating something every time. It's about it's about really like honestly, a hundred percent truthfully, my life is way more interesting than theirs. And mm. I know that. And they feel that and whenever they have a conversation with me and they say something like oh, like oh so how was your week like what 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 cool things happened this week what special things happened this week she's like what oh no nothing and i'm like wait what really like i don't remember the last time i had a week without something interesting happening without something crazy happening even if it was just like uh i heard i heard news about a new superconductor that is that is under development and it's being tested. Uh, it's being peer reviewed by scientists around the world. Now we don't know yet if it's going to turn out true or not. This was a few months ago. It's since been proven uh, not really a proper superconductor. But at the yeah. time, I was talking with somebody mm -hmm. who was this this lady who's she's a doctor, right? She works in a hospital, and she was like, "Oh no, nothing interesting in my life happened this weekend." I'm like. How? How? You work in science and you didn't hear the news that like, oh, if there's a fucking superconductor, it literally changes everything. Like, hold on. Let's talk a little bit about this. Actually, let's go a little bit deeper in this. So how do you think that a superconductor would change your job, uh, your life? What do you think AI is going to do? Sincere question. If 
AI and robotics become good enough, right now, sure, they can fold a shirt and it's not very precise, but if they become better, which they obviously will over time, who would ever choose a human surgeon when a robot never misses its cut? What do you think that's going to do to our society, to the economic structure around us, when even upper class people are losing their jobs to AI and robotics? Let's think about this a little bit. And then she's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, how do you have time to think about this? Why, why are you having like all of these... I'm having like otherworldly intellectual experiences all the time, thinking about all this shit all the while. I'm working 14 to 18 hour days on on my business, on doing this, on doing that. I'm running around all over the place. So you gotta make yourself interesting first, basically. You have to live an interesting life. Hmm. And when you live an interesting life, which good news is you are on your way to doing, I'm not sure if you're quite there yet, but you're on your way. So excellent. You're taking the right steps, but when you live a genuinely interesting life and you talk with other interesting people and you think about genuinely interesting stuff, it's never about like, oh, what can I do to keep things interesting this week? It's permanent. It's just like, oh, I'm more interesting than her every time because that's mm -hmm. just what it is. And that is great news for you because that also means you get to kind of pick. Right. Like that also means that you get to look like me and act like me and say the stupid shit I say and do the stupid shit that I do and still just get to be like, ah, fuck it. Ah, eeny, meeny, miny, miny. Okay. You'll do right. Like you get to pick because even compared to better looking, richer guys, I'm a better option overall because what women fear the most, it's not, loneliness it's not poverty right because we live in a world now where women will never be lonely ever that's not yeah. a concern right mm -hmm. we live in a world where women will never be in poverty because they will always have a job offered to them over a man if they're equally qualified they'll offer it to a woman every single time and they'll get paid more for it and even if they choose not to work we have a welfare state that makes sure that they're never going to be impoverished a woman's biggest fear in life is boredom if you can provide a consistent and permanent solution to that, you'll never be bored. You hang around me, you'll never be bored. You might get angry. You might be sad. You might be happy. You might be excited. You might be elated, but you'll never be fucking bored ever. And that's true. And you get to pick and if you manage to provide that, you'll basically want the game. You win. That's the basic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've win. noticed yeah, yeah. my first time with uh, that. With that women are actually in essence uh, very boring. Um, it was when I stayed at my girlfriend's place uh, in college when I first when we first started my first girlfriend in the first place, and and she was just I was just there. I had nothing to do, and I was like, Man, "This sucks." Like I, there was like no video yeah, games. Did you, did you ask TV. her what she normally does for fun? Right? You're like, uh. I'm like, so like, do you exercise? Do you do anything? Do you go for a run? Do you hike? Do you do anything? She's like, no, 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 no. I like to dance. I'm like, well, I don't. Can't. That's not how do you, in that situation, how do you find something even to talk about with someone that's boring? Like you have to come up with things of your own, basically, just to keep it, the whole important. thing alive. Yeah. So, like yeah. you know, we we had this this big physical attraction, so that was there. Um, and and luckily, like she she had interests too. Like she liked video games. I like it a lot too. Uh, so we had that in common. But when I was like at her place. She's playing her weird stuff that I just didn't like. I'm sure you know what World of Warcraft is. Like, I'm not yeah. gonna fuck do that. Um, so like she'd play and I would just be in a room like, all right, uh, oh, huh. Oh, I've already <laughs> looked at that 10 times. Like, you know, what am I gonna do? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh that's one thing I've noticed. I was like, I tried so hard to be with someone that's boring, right? Um, so it just made me realize that like I could probably just do better for myself um, and not try as hard, right? Uh, and I've done that. So, you know, maybe I don't I don't consider myself like the most interesting man in the world. I mean, he has a business and I'm sure you're doing interesting things in Italy. Um, but there are interesting things about me, I feel. And so when I talk to a girl, I don't tell her everything about myself. Right? I don't tell her what my background is or I'm sure she could tell where I'm from. But 
you know, I don't tell her certain things like about myself because to keep her interested, I'll sprinkle in a little bit here and the next eight a little yeah. bit there. And then like a month later, I'll be like, oh, yeah, this, this and that. Or, um, oh, yeah, by the way, my twin. And she's like, oh, you have a twin? I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention them. Bullshit. I didn't mention them on purpose because it's probably like the interest, you know, to keep her, to keep her, you know, thinking about me. Like, what else does this guy have? Exactly. Um, what I, I'm sure I, me I mentioned this the other uh, another time on the, on the, the stream, but my coworker she called me a matryoshka doll. You know those weird Russian dolls that like you take yeah, them yeah. out, and she and in the way it's like you're really interesting. Like I think I know everything about you, and then you just tell me this one thing because like you know I removed the doll. And there's something there with you, and that's a cool thing to be compared to in a weird way. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's good, right? Yeah, of course. That's good. I mean, like there are plenty of girls who don't know that I play music and then they come to my home and they're like, Oh, you play music. That's interesting. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Uh, and then one day they'll notice my trumpet and they're like, wait, what's that thing? I'm like, Oh, it's a trumpet. I didn't tell you. Like I actually majored in trumpet performance. I'm a professional level trumpet player, mm -hmm. like classical and jazz. Like, wow. What really? You play trumpet? What the fuck? I didn't know that. I'm like, mm -hmm. Didn't ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like they, 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 yeah. They, they, yeah. Like it can it can always go from there. And it's like, wait, I never told you that, like, yeah. Oh, the, the guy on TV, yeah, I'm friends with him. Actually, I'm just gonna I'm gonna shoot him a quick message. I'm gonna be like, hey, we saw mm -hmm. you on TV. My wife thinks you're handsome. Well, and then she's like, What the fuck? You know that guy? I'm like, yeah, we're friends. Mm -hmm. we, we we did a TV show together. What y'all you were you were on a TV show? Like it, it just always there's there's always yeah. more because yeah. You're living an interesting life. So there's just always more. There's stuff, right? There's absolutely, yeah. I don't I don't know what it is, but there are things about me and experiences that I've had that my wife doesn't know about, right? Just the other day, like two days ago, she was watching uh some some show about like, you know, you know, Koreans watch those stupid fucking travel shows, right? Where like a group of like four or five of them, they'll go somewhere. And they'll always just whoa, 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 right? Like, <laughs> yes. So she was, she was watching this. So show true. Where, where they they went to Egypt, and and I walked into the room and I was like, oh, are they in Egypt? And she's like, what? They're just driving down the highway. How did you know that they're in Egypt? And I was like, oh, because that highway from the Cairo airport to the main city in Cairo is very unique. It's the only place in the world that I've ever seen that. And she's like, wait, what? You've been to Cairo? Like, yeah, like it was a long time ago, but I went, I know that highway. I've been there, right? So, what? So yeah, there are still things she doesn't know about me, not because I hide anything, but just like, yeah. what am I supposed to do? Fucking hand her a resume? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, yeah but it's, it's good to have these experiences by like, you know, putting yourself in, uh, trying new things and doing new things and, and, and just kind of keeping consistent hobbies that just aren't UFC. And, and um, <laughs> Unless American you're football or, or European football, right? Like, just you know, there's got to be more to you, right? You don't want to be some 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 NPC, right? Yeah. Um, and let them know that, hey, you're not that special either. You keep me interested. Like, what do you what do you offer? Yeah. Right. Like, oh, you exercise? That's cool. I do too. I'm stronger and faster. Than you guarantee it. <laughs> what else do you do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you got those right. things without until, exercising. Until you can get arm wrestling. You aren't exercising enough. Right, uh, <laughs> Oh, you you deadlift fifty kilograms. I did that when I was eight. No, <laughs> you know. So, all right, yeah. It's always funny, like when you like race a girl, like you run, and then they're always surprised at how fast you are. I'm like, like why? Why does this keep surprising you? Yeah. <laughs> you are know, you so, kidding me? Do you, do you yeah. not know like just how muscles work? <laughs> like, yeah. it's a, so basically, you make a you make a competition with her. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you think about it, yeah, kind, kind of, but mm. it's it's like mm, it's a competition in the same way that like you would have a competition with your little brother or like a younger cousin or something. Yeah, you know? I see what you mean. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Like, I know I'm I'm always going to win, right? Like, but we, we both know that. But I want you to keep up, right? Sure. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's competition is like an encouragement of like, sure. I want you, I want to bring you up, but I want you to keep pushing me up. 
right? So, I had to, that's what I a good to, woman will do. Like, for instance, obviously I'm stronger than my girlfriend, right? But then she'll help me with like technique and lifting all sorts of stuff. Where I'm like, oh, well, perfect. I didn't know I could do that. And so now I'm actually working out a lot better thanks to her. You Dude, know, so I'm just I'm just imagining the technique she's helping you with is like, okay, so here's how you set your camera up in the gym so that you can the <laughs> Uh, this yeah. thing, like, spin around. Have you seen that viral video of the, the girl on Brooklyn Bridge in New York? And she got like this entire thing in the middle of the street. And she got like, this one camera that like spins around her. I was like, what the fuck? Like, technology has gotten this so far ahead. And all she's doing is using it to twerk on Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> That's stupid. Yes. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. This is why keep them locked up. <laughs> Anyway, uh, by the way, welcome, Crow. Glad to see that you made it. You're a little bit late, but that's okay. Here we'll do we'll do a late a late cheers with chaps for Crow. Cheers. Here's a cheers with Crow. Cheers, buddy. Welcome to the party. Welcome, Crow. That's yeah, the KF99. Coot knows what I'm talking about with that. Um, Antonio, how can you live a boring life in Italy? One word. All right, that's actually a good question. Yeah, only spaghetti. That. Only spaghetti. That's a boring life in Italy. Only spaghetti. Okay, yeah, that's a stereotype, but <laughs> that's funny as hell. And okay, it's pretty hard to actually live a boring life in Italy. I gotta be honest with that because w Italians and stuff, most of us love sports, but not only that, they love activities, hobbies, they love doing stuff. We love doing stuff. Like, you can see another guy that maybe likes football and at the same time goes cycling on maybe Wednesdays or and also does something else that nobody knows about that's also interesting. Like, we do a lot of activities, most of us, okay? Some of us are pretty boring, not going to lie, because or some of us are pretty sedentary, you know, because we, you know, work and stuff, studies maybe. I'm pretty young. I'm 20 years old. And, but for the most part, one thing that helps help us out a lot is the fact that we love traveling and that we live in a country that is beautiful, okay? Mm -hmm. Everything you can, you go, actually is beautiful. Maybe Barcelona, maybe uh, Capri here, next to here, actually in Naples, in a city called Bagel, that whatever. And, the fact that we have this beautiful country in our hands, plus our hobbies and our lifestyles, that's pretty active. That's how it's actually pretty hard for us to be boring in a certain sense, okay? Because everywhere we go, even, even at nights, not just drinking or going to pubs or going to clubs, we, ac we actually do games, we actually do stuff that, like, entertains us, okay? Every single time, every single night, every single um afternoon okay there's an activity that we can do maybe we decide to go to the cinema on wednesday and on thursday we're going we're going bowling for example okay it's, doing it's soggy really biscuits. hard to be bowling. i know they are huh? mm -hmm. soggy biscuits soggy biscuit thursdays you don't know you're a dumbass don't <laughs> i'll explain that to you later julius has to explain that to you later yeah right, you, you got it because i didn't, I'm not, I didn't I'm not get it. It. you no, it's, you dumped this shit on me okay hey, you asked fuck you okay i got I, i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give a, a tip to the guy that asked me that how can your life be boring be in italy there's yeah. actually two or three ways that you can actually be boring as a, at least in my opinion as a person either not having enough hobbies and just doing the same thing over and over again maybe like you go i don't know if you're a student or if you're a grown man maybe you go work let's say that you're a grown man okay you could work you have a nine to five job maybe or maybe you work from something else i don't know then you go to the gym then you go home and then you decide to just lay on the sofa and watch you know instagram or something like that and if you keep repeating the same thing over and over again without trying anything new eventually your life is going to be boring Okay, so it doesn't matter how long, it, how much time passes. If you keep doing this, even if it's a, a common hobby of yours, let's say cycling, okay, you, you do just that every single day or maybe every single week, 
Then you go talk to your girlfriend. What did you do today? Or cycling? What did you do yesterday? Or maybe a couple of days ago? Yeah, no, I like cycling and stuff. I see what the point Jack, uh, Jack was trying to make earlier. Like, you got to bring something new into your life. Even if you don't especially feel like it. Maybe try finding something that you kind of are interested in, curious in, and just go and do it and try it. Okay, just for the sake of doing it, so that you can actually have something new for yourself. Okay, if you don't like it, of course, don't do it, but try at least finding something new that you can actually add into your life. And maybe you'll just ditch it when you know you get bored of it and stuff. But the, fa the thing is, you gotta keep searching and keep implementing it. That's the thing. I mean, that's the secret that works for me, at least. I don't know about Jack and Julius. Here's honestly. the thing is that if you try something and you don't like it, that's also interesting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you do something and you're like, yeah, listen, I tried this thing and it was fucking stupid. Holy shit. Like, mm -hmm. no, now you have an opinion about something and you have an experience about something, right? Like, uh, yeah. one, of the, one of the most controversial things that I tell people whenever we talk about travel. And I'll tell people, like, listen, there are only two countries in the world I never want to return to under any circumstances. And those are India and China. Then, cool. Now, that sentence by itself brings up a bunch of other questions. They're like, okay, well, wait. How many countries yeah. have you been to? Where all have you been? What was wrong with India? What was wrong with China? Why don't you want to go back there? So does that mean that you want to go to these other countries, right? Like, it, that single sentence of I have an opinion – I have an experience and I have an opinion to go with it introduces so much more interest than I like to travel, right? Like, Oh yeah. Have a feeling, have an opinion, have a thought about something and hmm. you'll yeah, never, make it, make you'll it never controversial. be I, I like doing that. They're like, where have you been that I haven't like, I'm like Vietnam. I don't even think about it. And they go, why not? Like one, I was always hungry. And two, the, <laughs> the rats are everywhere, and they're the size of cats. I don't want to go back. It was always rats what did they feed you there? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what I don't did they feed you there? Like, it was just it's it's a lot of vegetables, so uh, not a lot of carbs, and so and the portions are really small. Um, so you're just you're just constantly hungry. I remember just just that feeling of like uh, uh, always hungry, um, and so I would I would. View. Yeah, I would, I would drink a lot of uh, water or juice, and then I was always thirsty. And then I'd, I'd eat a lot, uh, but then I was hungry like an hour later just because it was all vegetables. I was always leaves and, and <laughs> shit. I was like, it's overrated. It's fucking rabbit food. Yeah, it's all it was. I was like, I lost like five kilos on that trip, and I was gone a week. What? Yeah, yeah. Why? So like, and I got food poisoning, too, so that's, that's an important thing. So I was like, I got food poisoning. I'm always hungry, and and – you know, there are rats everywhere. I was like, I'm good. I'll, I won't be hurrying back anytime soon. Dude, Have I you got... ever been to Spain? Like, do you know what kind of food they feed you there? Like, I'm Italian, okay? The quality of food here is actually good. No, I'm not saying it just because I'm Italian, okay? No, it's, but, not, it's good. <laughs> I, like it. I personally like a lot of my food. But the thing about Spain is what they serve you there, even in restaurants and stuff, it's like, Pre-cooked foods, like pre-cooked yeah. sausages or eggs, or everything is pre-cooked there. The only good thing about Spain is that they have McDonald's, they have KFC, they have these things. <laughs> they're everywhere. They're basically <laughs> everywhere. But the food in restaurants are, is basically shit, honestly. I got to be honest with that because one, one of my friends, when we went to high school, high school together, when we actually went to Spain together, he got food poisoning from mm -hmm. Spain. From eating one of these pre-cooked foods, and I had a, a stomachache that actually lasted about three to four days before coming back to Italy. It was actually <laughs> a horrible experience food-wise. I mean, the architecture though was fine. The buildings were actually nice. They were pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Even the story behind it is actually interesting. But I was I was just there because of main two things: food and see how good the place was, vision-wise. Okay, mm -hmm. but it was, eh, mm, honestly. Okay. I, yeah, I, I, I see now. I've heard the same point you was trying to make about opinions, some things, even if they're negative. Yeah, now that I just hear myself explaining this thing to you, 
because at least it adds something into my personal experience that the other person actually sees and understands about me. Yeah, I, I, I actually I actually had an experiment with this thing. So thanks, Jack, for that. Thanks for this new piece of information that actually brings more interest in my life. That's what I do, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You. It sounds to me like you spent your time up in northern Spain, right? Obviously, you spent some time in Barcelona. What? Barcelona. Maybe Madrid. You, okay, so you spent the whole week up in Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like. It's fucking boring and it's weird. It's literally a tourist trap of a city. It's yeah. now I like a giant New Orleans. I spent some time down south in Cadiz and Sevilla, and it was much better. Everything was a lot chiller. It was a lot calmer. Uh, now you needed Spanish to get around a lot more there, right? Because again, Barcelona is a tourist trap of a city. They all speak enough English. Like, yeah, you'll get by. But then, yes, you know, they, then they understand get better mad at you for not speaking Catalan, uh, a language that's literally only spoken in their tiny little region of the world. It's like, oh, fuck off. Right? No. I, I agree with you. Barcelona fucking sucks. Hate it. Right? Uh, but down south, everything was a little bit more chill. I enjoyed it a little bit more. Kind of agree with you on the food, though. The only, the only decent food is basically just the paella down south yeah. and, and even then they were doing stupid shit like they would make uh like shrimp paella but it was like the whole fucking shrimp ah like yeah shit. right like with with the shell still on the legs and like they didn't even de-vein it they left the poop line in it and it's like what yeah. what the fuck is wrong with you like you guys do know that it's not the year 1500 right like we understand germ theory and bacteria at this point. Yeah? No? Okay, cool. Never mind. Fuck it. But I kind of do agree with you about the food. I, I've heard a lot about the food not being great there. Um, you know, uh, one of my friends, he's English. You know, they're not known for great food. For him to go from England to Spain and go like, this food is terrible. And he said, like, it was just like little things. And like, just it felt like they had microwaved it. Like, it wasn't anything good. Expensive, too. Dude, have you ever seen... I, I saw a video the other day on YouTube that was like two English guys and they went to a restaurant in America and they mm -hmm. ordered a baked potato and whenever it came out, like their reactions to it was just like, what the fuck is this? What have we been doing our whole lives? Like, what's going on? How did we fuck this up so bad? It's like, <laughs> how, seriously, how do you fuck up a baked potato? Like, I don't know. We just have a potato and we bake it. And then we add baked beans because then it's a baked potato. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> you <Sorry>. Get it? <laughs> You're actually no, seriously, bro. How do you fuck up a baked baked potato? Like, it's England. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> on an island that small, you have to assume some level of inbreeding. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, <laughs> we we've, we've gone way off topic a bit here. Uh, but if you scroll up a little bit, we had a we had another question from Coot in there. And by the way, uh, Crow or anybody else watching, if you guys have more questions, uh, go ahead and type them in for us. Right. Part two soon in the real question: How to make her your wife? Now, I'm going to answer this in the short way. Now, this exact same thing, but way more attention paid to that first section about like you need you must know your why you must know what your goals are you must have that clear communication between the two of you where you're both aligned on certain things now i'm going to depart from most other people who give relationship advice and they say like oh marry your best friend or some shit like that I don't agree with that at all. Uh, I don't even agree with the people who say like, oh, well, it's important that you share uh, political or religious views or anything like that. I actually don't particularly agree with that. But what I do think matters is, first of all, you genuinely enjoy being together. You enjoy spending time with each other too. And this one might be the most important out of all of them is that you have a good balance between the two of you. 
you both bring things to the table that make each other better, that complement one another. Like I went deep into this a couple of weeks ago when I was going into like how to find the one, right? Where I was talking about finding the things that match. I am this way. So I'm looking for a girl is this way because she will compliment me in this way. She will improve my life in this way or I am this way. So I'm looking for girls this way so that I can improve her life in this way. There needs to be a fairly equal balance on both of those things. And you need to be real about it. <clears throat> those of you who have met Lady North, you know she is the polar opposite of me. She is 100% opposite me. We aren't alike at all. We aren't best friends, right? And like... We love each other and we enjoy being together, but it's not because we're the same. We don't think the same. We don't like the same things. We like some of the same things. We have some similar interests. There's some movies we watch together, some shows we can watch together, but mostly we're on totally opposite sides of the spectrum, right? I like listening to political podcasts and news, and she likes watching Korean travel vlogs and people eating food at different restaurants around the world and saying, and I make fun of her for it, right? But that's okay. She makes fun of me for the stupid nerdy shit that I like to watch. That's fine, right? That's okay. Because that's not relationship. That's not personality. That's the same way that I can make fun of Julius for the stupid shit that he watches or does or whatever else. Or I can make fun of Crow for playing like, fucking League of Legends with Paul, like, oh, let's go be in sixth grade again or whatever the fuck it is, right? That's fine. We can make fun of each other for that. We can tease about that. That's not the important stuff. The important stuff is what do we both bring to the table? How do we actually complement each other? How do we work together to make each other better? So like a fucking baked potato, a potato by itself is pretty fucking gross. Butter by itself is pretty fucking gross, but baked potato with butter on it, oh, son, way better than the sum of its parts. Same thing here. And then once you're feeling really good about the relationship, then you talk to her about bringing a third in, and you're like, hey, how do you feel about a little sour cream, yeah? And she's like, okay, but only if we can add chives, and you're like, oh, things are getting kinky now, okay, cool. Analogy broke down, clearly. <laughs> Julius is just at it. He's just sitting there, like wide eyed. He's like, "What the fuck are you talking about, Jack?" Yeah, like, Wait, what happened? Yeah, yeah I was, yeah. I was, I was hitting baked potatoes, and this happened. I was, I was, I was just throwing on the baked. Potatoes. I was waiting for the bacon and Don't the worry. cheese and the Don't rest. Worry. We are not bringing any chives in, so we're not taking applications. No, I'm not listening. So, anyway, my my point though is you you don't make her your wife. You find somebody who does all of those things, right? You go through the same process that I described today, but you just dig 10 times deeper on all of the aspects of it. And your, your default state should always be no. I need to be proven that this is the correct answer, right? Actually, it's a um, game. Wait, hold on. Hold the fuck on, Crow. You're playing a 4v4 chess game? What the fuck kind of style chess is this? Nah. I don't I, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I think he's he's just making it up now. He's like, oh well, just so you know, Fortnite is kind of like chess if you think about it. Oh my god. Bullshit. <laughs> like in Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, ju just that you have to be like Empire State Buildings to play. I tried it once, but nothing special, honestly. 4v4 chess or Fortnite? Antonio? Fortnite? Oh, me? So, was I, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I was looking at Crow in chat. Uh, <laughs> 4v4. <laughs> Four v four chess, or I don't know what four v four chess is, honestly. Yeah, so I guess, I'm gonna for I, I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, I never heard of it. Yeah, 
No, that that absolutely sounds like some soggy biscuit bullshit. I don't know what he's on about. Anyway, uh, it's it's a chess game. Soggy biscuits a chess game now. I'm learning new things every fucking day, Crow. Thank you. I I'm gonna mean, search for that later. I'll explain it to you before we get off. <laughs> He'll show you next time. No, Gross. No, 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 don't show it's us. Silly. You're good. Really? We don't want to see that. Really? Listen. You know, Crow, do you know why the English can't play chess? Because they lost their queen. But I'm Island. Too soon. <laughs> no such thing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember after Steve Jobs died, I put on my Facebook. You know what? You know, uh, what was it? A, a nap a day keeps a doctor away. <laughs> Steve Jobs. <laughs> oh, the contract question, right? Uh, Julius, if you don't mind scrolling up a little bit, could ask a, a contract question up there. I'll dive into that one real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't know what he was talking about. How do you update the contract later when a new situation happens? This is going to be really situation dependent. Depends on what you want to do. Depends on what the situation is, right? Like if you get into a situation with a girl and you're like, hey, look, I like this relationship. I want to stay with you. But you've stopped having sex with me. So we've got three options. One. We can start having sex again. Two, you can let me have sex with other people and we can stay together. Or three, we can stop being together. But continuing to not have sex is not an option, right? Like you might have to, you don't necessarily need to present things in that direct of a manner, but sometimes you might have to, right? So it depends on what your situation is and what part of the contract you're trying to renegotiate. Or if you're trying to like to, to see how she would feel about like bringing another girl into the bedroom or something, then like, okay, cool. You can kind of feel that one out. And that one can be a little bit more of like, uh, let's kind of play this, let's slow roll this, let's plant some ideas, let's see what we're gonna add here. But uh, it really depends. Could, do you have like a specific situation in mind or something where you've, You've maybe wanted to change the the terms of your relationship, but you didn't know how to, or something like that. Uh, because if you ask me a more specific question, I might be able to give you a better answer. Um, and by the way, this is also one of the reasons why you should be careful about giving away your commitment until you're sure that, like, I'm comfortable paying the cost for what I'm going to get here, right? Because if you think through all this stuff and like what's, what happens, so again, back to the thing I was saying earlier about you need to consider your, your why, you need to consider your balance, you need to consider the costs and be your own accountant, then like, okay, cool. Am I just trying to make her my girlfriend so that I can get pussy on tap? Okay, what happens if the tap breaks? What happens when she's on her period and I'm horny as shit, right? Uh, then do we have, do we have dispensation to hook up with other people in that kind of situation? Uh, is she one of those girls who is going to stop putting out as much when y'all get together, but then she gets really angry if you watch porn or if you jerk off or something, right? Cause mm -hmm. like, that's something to consider. That's actually something to think about. And you need to understand some of like, the hidden costs and that's why like the clear communication thing is so important so my advice still same as it was when i was giving the lesson is 95 to 99 percent of the time is hold off your commitment until you need to give it or until you meet somebody who you're like oh yeah i'll pay it that's fine right We'll, we'll figure out the details as we go. There might need to be a little negotiation as we go. But, yeah, this one's worth keeping around. You might run into a situation like that, right? But 
if you're young and you're just like, oh, pussy on tap. Yeah, woo, party on, right? Like, then it's probably a bit different, right? You're just, you have pussy blindness. It's okay, right? It happens, but it's real. Coot, did you have anything specific that you wanted me to answer on that on that topic? I don't know. Coot may have fallen asleep. He's, I swear to God, Coot's like 10 years younger than me, but also somehow he's 10 years older than me. <laughs> okay, I don't I don't have one specific, but but cliffhanger. I, I get it. Like it it takes some time to type it and then it takes time for the shit to go through that. YouTube has fucking filters among filters on top of filters. It's such a wild thing with like, especially with live stream commenting. Oh, they get weird. Okay. Can be any of the examples you said that happens years later. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything like that that I've had to like readdress later on in a relationship. Um, most of the time, I don't think that I've run into situations like that where I wanted to renegotiate the situation later. But also, that's because of my personality, where, like, I'm just going to do the things that I'm going to do. And if you're dating me, then you already know me. So, like, it's not like it's a surprise where it's like, oh, Jack, I can't believe it. You went out on Saturday night with your friends and you were talking to other girls. Oh, my God. Right, like nobody would ever say that to me because, like, of course I did, yeah, right. But like, I didn't stick my dick in her. So, what do you want, right? Like, if you're actually, you know, pearl clutching and worried about that, then this is not a thing, right? I don't renegotiate a contract like that where it's like, oh, but I want you to change who you are. That's not that's not a conversation that mm -hmm. I'm gonna have. No. Um, yeah, another question that I have for you, Jack, about yeah. that thing on a girl, like, do you know that stereotype that girls like bad boys and stuff, and they you, you they have that saying, I yeah, I can change him or, or stuff like that. Like, is that finger, is it like a true thing? Is, is it because girls find the boy interesting and they just want him to be in a certain way or? I don't really understand that. I, yes, it's true, but I actually think that it's a level deeper than what people say. People say what they see on the surface and they're like, oh, girls like bad boys or girls like a project. And like, okay, cool. That's true. Why? Right. And it's not because they think that they can fix him. It's actually because uh, it's a person who does whatever they want and they don't give a shit which means they aren't simps, they aren't needy, they have other options, and so she wants to be the one to keep him to herself. <clears throat> women view women view men the same way that like children view toys, where nobody wants the toy that nobody's playing with. Everybody mm -hmm. wants the toy that everybody else wants, right? And that's how women are, is they see somebody who can be with any woman and so they want him for themselves because that means that he's he's uh in in demand which means that socially speaking he's going to be a higher value man not necessarily because he has any of the higher value qualities or anything but just a man who doesn't give a shit what anybody else thinks and just does whatever he wants doesn't care what she thinks doesn't care what anybody else thinks but is also and this is important, is also successful with women, right? You have to be both. Because if you just do whatever the fuck you want and you're unsuccessful with women, then you're MGTOW or you're incel, right? 
But if you do what women want all the time, and even though you're successful with women, it's like, okay, cool. But you're a simp, right? Like okay, you're so a male. It's a combination of the two. Basically. Yeah, exactly. you, you, have to, you have to find the meeting point. And that meeting point is where girls are like, okay, cool. I want him because he understands women and he can talk to them and he can do well with them. But also he doesn't give a fuck about them, doesn't need them in his life and doesn't need me. Because here's, here's the thing is that like, yeah, women want a project. They don't actually want a project. They want somebody who they can feel like they're like, oh, I'm a good influence on him. I'm balancing him out or something like that, which can be a good thing. But more importantly, they just, they want somebody who isn't going to rely on them. They don't want to play mother, right? Mm. And for yeah, all, the, all the beta guys, they have to play mother. And for all the incel MGTOW guys, they don't understand anything about women. And so they're fucking a bore to talk to, right? They're like, oh, let me let me show you my, my highest level Pokemon. And you're like, no, <laughs> mm-hmm. no. So it's it's where the two meet, right? That's where success actually happens. So it's not just the bad boys. It's not just the projects. It's the, I don't care, but I don't care because everyone's replaceable, including you, right? Mm. Yeah, I get it. That's that's the thing. Yeah, that, yeah, that's actually very interesting. Yeah, because I always get these kind of stereotypes, but. Sometimes I just think that people don't know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, think about it a different way then. Think about it through through a working lens, right? So if if a company advertises that they're like, okay, look, we have a job opening and we're willing to take anybody. We don't care who, literally anybody. Then what do you think the chances are that they get a good person to work for them? It's very low, right? Yeah. But yeah. If you have a company that's like your your Google or your Apple or your Facebook or whatever else, where they're like, oh, no, 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 we'll take interviews all year long, even if we're not hiring, but we're only going to hire like 0.5% or Harvard, something like that. We're like, dude, the actual education at Harvard is literally worse than what you could learn on YouTube for free. But people want to go to Harvard. Why? Because it's exclusive. Right. Yeah, they they make it sound like more expensive, like more worthy than it is, more yeah, valuable. But it's mm. not right. Like guaranteed, you can learn. I mean, like the the line from Goodwill Hunting from like 1995 was like, "You paid forty thousand dollars for this education that I got for two fifty in late fees at the local library." Right. Like, it's it's the same shit, but you create the club, the exclusivity, the we don't need you, which makes you want us more. And mm. that's that's what makes it so much more appealing. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the bad boy or the project or the, 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 the rock and roll musician who's banging a different girl every night. And she's like, oh, but I think I can be the one to keep him to myself. Because if she is, then it proves to her that she's a high value woman, right? Yeah, okay, I, I get it, I get it. So, yeah, no, it's actually very simple to understand. Uh, it's you know, The fact is that you see so much information online about how a girl is supposed to be versus how she really is. Then you get an expert to tell you there's that's deeper than that. Yeah, I actually need that kind of thing for me because yeah. there's too much information like just as you said for example of harvard and everything is just basically just an apparition of things but exactly. if you want to go deeper in stuff yeah you really it's, all, really, it's, pure, yeah. Bullshit. it's pure bullshit right uh and coot coot brought this one up as well right like could you click on that one for me julius yeah he said you go to harvard because being at harvard gets you published papers, which makes people go to Harvard because going to Harvard gets you published papers, which- Yeah, yeah that's because you got the, the name on or, or, yeah. Exactly, right? And so now here's the thing is that I'm not, I'm not saying that that's worthless. There is value in having that name on your piece of paper. There is, but 
we need to be very clear about what that value is. It's purely value because it's exclusionary, right? It's not value because those people are necessarily smarter or because those people are necessarily better at anything, and especially not now, where it's like, oh, you went to Harvard. Now, wait, let me take that back. If you graduated from Harvard now and you're white, then that means that you're genuinely exceptional. And I'll accept that, right? I'll absolutely accept that. I'm, I'm on board with that. Listen, if you manage to get through all of the affirmative action and everything else, and you're a white straight man who got into Harvard, I'm like, look, I, you win. All right, cool. Everybody else, though, it's like, all right, cool. Well, even if you got in on your own merits, the way that the system is set up, we can only now view you as a diversity hire. That's it. So... Harvard isn't that special, but it does have value, like you said, Coot, for the name recognition, for that alone, right? Because somebody could be 10 times smarter, 10 times uh, uh, better, better reproducible studies, better everything, right? But if they're at Mississippi State, no one's going to pay attention to their paper, right? It, you're correct that there is a very serious discrepancy there, but fuck it. We have to have heuristics somehow. So this is the one that we've had until now, and it's slowly changing. It's a process. However, on your individual life, on your dating life, none of that shit matters. Turns yeah. out <laughs> girls don't give a fuck what your GPA was. Girls don't give a fuck where you went to school. Man, I'm not even sure that my wife knows the name of the university I went to, right? And she's been there. Right, we went to go visit my family who lives in the city, and we took her to the campus. Like she's been on the campus where I went to school, and I don't think she knows the name of it. That's how unimportant it is. Fair. It doesn't fucking mm -hmm. matter. Now, granted, yeah, that yeah. also might be because it wasn't Harvard. She would definitely remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. <clears throat> what about you, Julius? How, what's your relationship status at the moment? Girlfriend, <laughs> yeah, taken. And yourself? Mm. Taken. <laughs> what also taken? Uh, also in Texas. I went to a place called Sam Houston State, not Harvard. <laughs> Far from it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not Harvard. No, no, no. He won. He he. Give, he doesn't give himself a lot of credit. Jack's school is actually uh it's not bad, it's pretty good. It's called Texas Tech. He just he for some reason he went to a tech school and he majored in music. <laughs> that's that's his mistake. <laughs> a scoring game yeah. or music. What do you play? Trumpet. Oh yeah, the trumpet, right. Do you yeah. play any other instruments or is it just trumpet? Guitars. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he plays guitar. <laughs> uh, honestly, and, and actually, if I turn the camera, you'd see two more guitars here in the corner. I, I have four guitars in the room. I have one trumpet that sits behind me here. It holds up my blue light. That's how much I play the trumpet these days. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, very out of practice. That said, I like all the all the muscle memory, all the knowledge is still there. Every now and then, whenever I get calls in from the orchestras and they're like, ah, come, we need a substitute. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm free that weekend. I can come. I can show up. I can sight read the pieces. We, we play them. Like, I'm not as good as I was then, but I'm still good enough to, like, I'm still better now, 15 years out of practice, than most people in the world, right? A girl... Damn called me gotta go that's okay dude, because it's we're, we're in about two hours now it's about time for us to wrap it up as well yeah, yeah. and actually we're that's out. a good time for us to go ahead and end it here so yeah, i think uh, we've got a, a lot of points covered a lot of question answered we yeah. actually got a lot of yeah, yeah absolutely and, everything antonio don't go anywhere because we're like we we aren't done yet um but 
Uh, thank you, Julius and Antonio, for joining me. I uh, really no appreciate problem. it. And you guys watching, thank you so much for joining. Like always, much love from Papa Jack. And until next week, lads, Papa Jack out.